Hi, my name is Jennifer Claro, and I work as the director at the Cameron Senior Center, and we're today in the library with um, Allison Christopher, our town social worker. And Allison has been wearing many hats lately. And um, Allison, I know you were very successful in um, obtaining a grant through the Greater Lowell Community Foundation for um, a, well, a six-week wellness program. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that program? Sure, yeah. So this year we have really been trying to focus a bit more on emotional wellness and um, making sure that everyone's mental health stays as good as it can be during all of these physical health challenges that people are having with COVID and um, all that's gone on in the last couple of years. So one of the things that we did was apply for um, this grant to get Lisa Wesson, who is an LICSW, she's a licensed social worker in private practice. She does a lot of work um, on mindfulness and emotional regulation, um, overall emotional wellness that can apply to any person um, in their life. So we asked her to create a six um, series workshop, um, six session workshop, I guess I should say. And that's going to be starting on April 8th. It's going to be on Fridays, and it's going to be once a month. So we're hoping that we will get people to sign up who will want to come to each of the sessions. And she's going to build on the learning um, throughout the time that she's here. So she's going to teach people about relaxation and mindfulness and awareness of your emotional state, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. And then kind of managing your um, emotional connections with other people, communication style, um, and how to handle things when they get difficult. So I feel like it's, it's going to be a really great program for anyone to attend. So you needn't have mental health issues per se to sign up for this. Um, but if you do, that's great too. Um, it's really something that anyone can use in their daily life to function better um, in their emotional life. Um, so that's what we're doing with Lisa Wesson. Do people just, do they need to call to sign up or can they just show? Yeah, we'd like people to call and register, um, you know, at least the week before April 8th, just so that she's going to have handouts and education for each session. So. We'd like to know, if we can, how many people will be attending um, that week before so that we can get the copies of things made and have enough seating and handouts for people. But it is free, so um, there's no need to pay. And these kinds of programs are really quite costly when people pay out of pocket. So I feel like it's a, a great thing that the um, Greater Lowell Community Foundation has been able to provide. Well, and I know you've, ha you've invited her here for some other mental health programs and um, I know people really enjoyed her and are looking forward to having having her back so yes that's, that's exciting so yeah that's really good. the last two sessions that she did a couple of years ago I think we had about 40 yeah, participants right. each time so and people loved it right so give us a call if people are interested yeah, yeah. and kind of speaking along the same lines of kind of mental health I know that you know um, social services I know you all have been looking at um, a, a kind of a support group. Yeah. And I know your counterpart, Annette Cerullo, um, our outreach coordinator, has been working with on that effort. And could you tell us a little bit about that support group that's upcoming? Sure. Yeah, so Annette and I had been talking about the number of people who have mentioned in passing to us or other members of the staff at the Senior Center that they had experienced a loss or were dealing with grief um, in the last couple of years, whether it be a recent loss or um, a loss that had triggered grief returning from previous events in their lives. Um, so Annette decided to really take this on and create a grief support group um, for Westford seniors ages 55 and older. Um, and it's going to be twice a month on the second and fourth Thursdays of the month at four o'clock. And it's actually starting this Thursday, tomorrow, the 24th. Um, and it's very informal in that people can drop in. You don't need to sign up ahead of time. Again, it's a free program. 
and um, Annette's going to be providing a lot of guidance and resources for people in the group, but also um, just allow for a safe space for people to talk about what they've been dealing with, and um, she'll take a lot of feedback from the participants about what direction they want to take things in as well. Um, so we're excited to be offering that. There hasn't been a support group for grief here in quite a long time, so yeah. I hope people will take advantage of it. I think Annette is, um, has a great plan in place. Well, I, and I think coming out of COVID, unfortunately, we did have a lot of um, participants that were very, very close to, to the center and um, were very special to, to their spouses. And um, mm -hmm. it just seems like it's such a great time to be able to offer um, this, this resource. Yeah, absolutely. And with COVID, I know, you know, it's kind of the other hat I was kind of talking about that you've been wearing. Um, I know you've been very involved as well as in that with the ARPA funds that the town has received. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been ARPA funds that have been um, designated for, we'll, we'll just say I know mental health, we'll just start with the mental health um, co-payment. And could you tell us a little bit about um, what, what the co-payments or what the ARPA funds, um, sorry. So Allison, with the many hats that you're wearing, I know you've, you've been very involved with the ARPA funding that the Council on Aging has received. Um, and one of those pockets of money is for um, co-payments and financial support for those people that might not be able to access mental health services. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us kind of what the process is to be able to obtain um, financial support um, sure. through, this, through this funding? Yeah, so we asked for this because we had heard from a number of people that one of the barriers to accessing counseling or mental health support was that co-payments and deductibles um, can be high and that that has been challenging for some people to afford. So we got a small amount of money um, allocated to this and it's gonna be a very simple process for people to access it. They really just need to contact me and be able to show proof of being on a range of the federal or state benefit programs. So people who are on fuel assistance, SNAP, Mass Health, um, uh, transitional assistance, SSI, um, really, the low to moderate income folks that are on these benefit programs would be eligible to use the funding. Um, you know, we will need to limit the amount per person, but I would just encourage people, if this is a barrier for you to get involved with counseling and that's something that you feel would be helpful, this is a way that it might help to reduce the um, financial burden that it puts on individuals. So just call my office directly at 978-399-2325 and I can discuss it with you and tell you more about it. Well, kind of along the, the same lines of um, kind of mental health, I know that you know a lot of people have experienced financial loss, loss of jobs um, since COVID. Um, and the town has allocated funding um, through ARPA to be able to assist people in financial crisis with um, utilities, rent, mortgages, um, and, and other basic costs. Um, mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about how someone can access that funding? And is it totally restricted just to older adults? Is it for all ages? Okay, yeah. So the the fund is called the Additional Household Assistance Fund um, through ARPA. And the way that we created it in town is to allow any um, household to apply as long as they are at 300% of the federal poverty level or below. So um, for example, that is $40,770 for an individual in their gross yearly income. Um, or 54930 for a two-person two family. Um, and obviously the amounts go up depending on the household size and that's all contained in the application. 
but anyone who fits in that financial criteria and is struggling with paying a rent payment that's due or overdue, a mortgage payment that's currently due or overdue, or household utilities um, can apply. And once, once they're financially deemed eligible, um, they are able to provide me with their um, invoices and we get um, checks issued by the town for those costs. Um, so, so does that Yeah, so basically it's for, for any household. Yep. Um, there's no age requirement. It's yep. just kind of a, a financial criteria that they must meet. Correct. And then current bills are past due. Yes, yes. Yeah, we're not unfortunately able to pay bills that are going to be due in the future, um, but someone who has an invoice that they're ready to pay but don't have the funding to do it or who have a, a lot of um, arrears on, on some of their bills, we've been able to help pay some of that down. The maximum amount that any household can get is $2,000 during the year. Um, so keeping that in mind, we've just been able to help people to select which bills they're trying to pay. And then um, the accounting office has worked very closely with us to get the checks out quickly. So it's been great. Y'all, it definitely has been a good um, partnership between the accounting office and through yeah. um, social services and the COA. So yeah, thank you for your, for your efforts. Um, and we also appreciate the accounting department's efforts as well. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was just wondering, I, you know, mental health, we're so, we're so glad to be able to be offering programs and see people back at the center. Um, you know, we just also wanted to update people on our hours, our extended hours, mm -hmm. and offerings for younger adults, um, age 55 and older, um, which, you know, are each Tuesday and, and, and Thursday evenings from um, 4 to 8. And could you tell us a little bit about some of the offerings or? Well, I know that Annette and Katie have worked together to try to create some return of programming in the evening hours and get people back out of their houses as much as possible. Um, but I think the, the other thing to keep in mind is just that the gym is open during the evening, the library is open, you know, there are just things that people can come out and do mm -hmm. in the building to get out of their houses. Um, but the, the program listings are increasing in the next month or two so i would encourage anyone who's interested and and may work during the day maybe some of the younger seniors that are only available in the five six seven o'clock hours to just check our website for the new newsletters um, and really see if there's anything that is interesting that you'd like to benefit from here yeah well thanks allison for the updates from social services no and, problem and from our town social worker and um until next time. Until next time. Hi, Katie. I'm glad you're up from the holy celebration that you just um, experienced the last two hours. And I noticed the um, kind of the tattoo on your hand. Can you tell us a little bit about what you all did at the holy celebration today at, at lunchtime? So this is a Mindy. Um, it's um, done with the henna paste. Um, they're normally done for uh, weddings. However, um, because Holy is also the celebration and the festival of color and spring and love, I thought it would be appropriate to do some Mindy's while, since none of our older adults really wanted to throw colored powder all over the place. <laughs> so <laughs> I did see all the colored powder, but I didn't see it all over the place. But it was yeah. very pretty colors. Yeah. We decided not to throw it inside the building. <laughs> yeah, I think Chris probably, Chris and John would really appreciate that. Yeah. So we saved that for outside. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So Katie is um, our program coordinator and um, has been working on some really exciting trips um, coming up, uh, kind of starting in May. May. Yeah, so um, our first trip is to the Isabella Gardner Museum. Uh, we have other trips coming up to the Woo Sox game in Worcester, to North Shore. Um, 
music theater. Uh, we're going to see Kinky Boots, and uh, we have a uh, um, couple of lobster bakes coming up, and um, I think there's a tribute show in December for Paul Inca. So it's going to be a lot of variety. A lot of variety here. So. So what do you have to do? So do you just come to the the center, and do you? Is it all inclusive? Are you paying one lump sum for the yep. trip? So um, the trips kind of vary in prices. Sometimes we'll do smaller um, like van trips okay. with our COA van. Um, and then we have larger um, bus trips that we use different tour companies okay. from. And so the tour companies usually average around $100, give or take $20. Um, and it's all inclusive. It pays for the gratuity for the van for the bus driver for the um, for the meal, the show, depending on what you're doing. Well, and there's usually lots of extra little stops on on these trips. It's usually yeah. a, quite a full and fun day. It's definitely a full day. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I know the first trip um, in May to the Isabella Gardner Museum. Uh, they're also having lunch um, at Venencia, so um, that'll be nice. So when you're on these ships, I know they, um, they're organized through a tour company. Mm -hmm. um, and usually, is there typically a chaperone um, on these trips from the center, just in case there's any issues yep. that may arise? Yep, so um, we usually uh, like to partner with other groups. Um, so. I know some of our trips are partnering with our other COAs and uh, even our rec department for some of them. And, uh, but there it will be a representative from the senior center going on each of the trips to um, kind of be there in case anything happens. Yeah. So to just to participate in a trip, they can either come in and grab some of the flyers. I know that you have out downstairs on our big So many board. flyers, yes. Um, I know people are so excited to have the return of trips. So um, Yeah, because travel has been so limited through the pandemic. And as soon as I put these flyers out, some of the trips are already full. Like right. They're like, I need to go. I uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm glad, I'm glad we're able to have that offering now. And I know you've been working on some new um, exercise classes as well. Um, can you share a little bit about Yeah, that? so we have um, two new classes right now at night. Uh, we have like a night yoga and uh, train with Shane, which is like... Uh, kind of a circuit? Yeah, it's kind of like a circuit training mm -hmm. workout class. Um, and so those are some of our new night programs. We work uh, really well with well-being fitness over... Um, Cornerstone Plaza, they have, um, uh, so we have like classes twice a week over at their facility. So, which is kind of a nice little partnership because mm -hmm. we're able to offer more here as well. Uh, yeah. So the two new classes, um, the, the two new classes include the, you said the yoga class and the train with Shane? Yep. Okay. And so those are some of our night programs. Um, we have, uh, our fitness center is open. Uh, we have different luncheons. Uh, like once every two months, we have a dinner with Donna. Plus, the train with Shane is every Thursday night, and the uh, yoga class is every Tuesday night. Yeah, so. and the I know with the the dinner with Donna is new, and you and there's a usually typically there's always a performer or entertainment which um, has. Many people have enjoyed, and I know they, you get filled up pretty quick. So. Yes, so when you see it in the newsletter, sign up right away. Uh, Dinner with Donna is always a blast. Um, we had, like our first one, we had like an Italian night, and we had a accordion player come in, and then this one we're having um, Roger Tinknell, and they're having like a Hawaiian theme, and then next one I believe is in May, and that's going to be... Our performer is going to be uh, Smoking Joe, and it's going to be like we're going to have pulled pork sandwiches, and it's going to be really fun. Yeah, and I know um, Smoking Joe would be the first time he's performed here, but we 
got really high reviews from the Bill Ricca um, COA, so we're kind of excited to see yeah. um, his talent. Yeah, I'm always excited to try new performers here at the Senior Center. Um, I know in June we're having um, Matt York come in too, and we got him through the Cultural Council grant. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, along the same lines of some of the new programs, I know you've kind of structured bingo a little bit differently um, since we've yes. been open. You, um, can you tell us a little bit about So that? bingo is Mondays um, from 1.30 to 3, from 1 to 3, and then we no longer have night bingo, but we have it on the first and third Friday of each month. And we're having uh, lunch prior to that. So lunch starts at noon, and it's cooked by Mike Dyer. And then we have um, bingo starts right at 1, and then we get out around 3. And how much does the cards cost? Or, so, you, or is it doppers and sheets? So there's so many things involved with bingo. So the doppers... Um, are like the markers that you mark your bingo sheets on, and those are a dollar a dauber. Um, and the bingo cards, you can have them um, any variety. So we have cards where there's just one bingo square on it, and that's a dollar. There's some that are three bingo games per sheet, and that's three dollars. And then we have it all the way up to like 15 games per sheet. So, so is it almost like an average a dollar per, per, per card? Per or? card, yeah. Okay. Each little square of bingo is a dollar. So if you have 15 bingo cards, you got it's $15. And you play with those, those 15 cards throughout the whole bingo. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of like a packet. So, um, so there might be 15 squares here, and then after the first game, you rip it off, and then there's another row of um, so you bingo just cards. So you pay fifteen dollars total for fifteen cards for that whole afternoon. Yep, and then the, we play about like ten games. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So and so that sounds like a lot of fun. And I know it is. Mondays it's getting pretty full. Yeah, yeah, we had about forty people this past Monday. So. Um, and our Fridays are new. We just had them, so we just started. So hopefully that gets just as big. Yeah, and so, so anybody that doesn't have transportation, they can um, just call the Senior Center and um, schedule a ride. We just ask for a 48-hour notice. Yep, you just call Bob at 978-399-2322, and he'll find a way to get you here. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us with um, before we close out on programs that we should know about? I mean, we got a lot of fun, different types of um, programs during the day and at night. Um, like, I'm really excited for our meet and greet that we're doing. Um, I've had some people come up to me and be like, Katie, I need to find a guy. And <laughs> I'm just like, okay. Um, so, so this is an opportunity to meet a a variety of people, yeah. yeah it's because it, at first we're like, well, let's try to do speed dating and here at the center, but um, it's going to be a lot more involved in that. It's like you don't have to be a single person coming to this event. We have couples that are coming that just want to meet new people mm -hmm. here in the community that just have moved here and that want to get involved. So it's going to be a lot of icebreakers. It's going to be me and Annette just trying to get people talking and having a good time. That sounds fun because we have so many fun people here and a lot of new people. So it's a, a great new addition for programs. Yeah. So, and is that, when is that? When's the that break? is April 26th and it's going to be, ooh, I want to say 5.30 on the 26th and you are right oh yay <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. uh, yeah oh great all right well thank you katie so much for updating us with all these programs and thanks for doing such a good job oh thanks jen you're welcome